thought, uh, being it's a nasty, horrible day outside and it's uh, windy and raining, then uh, what better the thing to do than to maybe do an instructional video? Now, um, my 450, this one, uh, it's a, well, it's, it's a bitter really. It, uh, it has mainly 450 T-Rex motor, um, line servos, um, oh, I've got all sorts of bits and bobs. Anyway. It flies okay, but it was on the 3GX unit, and personally I've never had a lot of luck with the 3GX, so I'm now testing it with the Raybirds, which um, I've had in my drawer for ages and decided to put it on. Uh, I've had a few flights with it, it seems okay, so I'll report on that later, hopefully. Now, the problem we've got at the moment, as I say, it's very windy outside, I just did a test flight, and um, I just touched the tail. That's all I've just done. Um, by touching the tail, what I've actually done is stripped the gears. Uh, it's a common fault with anybody who's got a 450 torque tube. Um, if you land them slightly tail heavy, they will strip this gear inside here. Uh, it's plastic gear, it's a superficial gear, and um, it's more trouble than it's worth, <laughs> I suppose. Um, it never strips the tail gear or strips this one. I don't know why, but uh, I guess because there's more load on this one. But anyway, I'm waffling. So, basically, what I'm going to do is show you how to change this. Now this video is not for anybody that owns a 450 and has experience of a torque tube because you'll know this already. This is for somebody who maybe has a 450 at the moment and doesn't know how to repair it and is maybe getting somebody else to help out when this gear goes. It's not that difficult so let's go for it. Now I may pause the video a few times because you know some of this is boring and some of it is tricky getting the tail off but we'll go for it. So first of all there's four screws on each side. So you've got two at the back which are quite obvious. Um, if you've got a, a normal belt drive it's very similar. You've got two screws at the back there. With the belt drive you've got two slightly forward but on this one you've got uh, two there and there. Now be careful with this bottom one because you've also got on this particular model your server at the back and your mounting bracket is just on that one. So it's that one just below your main gear that one just above it and the two at the back. So what I'm going to do is basically undo those and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so the screws are out. As I said, there are four each side, two at the back and two at the front. Also, what we need to take off at the same time uh, is the stabiliser bars for the boom. Um, now, it's easier, I believe, to take them off the front, though you can take them off the back entirely up to you. Just to me, if they're off the front, they're out of the way of the heli and uh, not going to get in the way when you're messing about up here. Also, your slide, your slide bar, your push rod, whatever you want to call it, for your tail assembly, that needs to come off as well. Now, in theory, when you've done all that, you should, very much like a normal um, helicopter with a belt drive, be able to pull out the boom, and that should come out quite simply. Um, everything should stay in place. As you can see, if I spin the torque tube there, everything's all together still, um, and so we can put that to one side, you don't need it for a minute. And the next thing we need to do is take this block out. Now, this block can be a little bit tricky. Um, what you need to kind of do is, because it has, I don't know if you can actually see these, just in there, a locating peg, both sides. You need to kind of stretch the frame a little bit, and, and, and again, it is a bit tricky, and sort of work this out of the frame. Now, the only problem you've got here is you'll get one side out, as I've done with that one, You'll then go to the other side to get the other side frame out and you'll pull it apart and sometimes that one will pop back in again. So what I tend to do is just get a little bit of leverage on the back there, get my pliers and try and wiggle it out and try and get both of my fingers. So basically you're wiggling it out and trying to get these locating pegs out. As I said, it ain't easy. And it's a bit of a pain and I think I'm going to need to pause the video while I do that. <laughs> okay, so as I said, it can be quite infuriating doing that because um, yeah, <laughs> what tends to happen is you uh, you get one side out and then you go to the other side and it snaps back in on the side you've just been working on. So it is a bit infuriating, but as you can see, they do come out. They just take a little bit of messing about with sometimes. Um, what I have seen done is people slide some cardboard down there just to sort of get the locating pegs so they're covered, but um, it's up to you. You'll probably find your best way of doing that. But once you've got the four screws out, um, basically once you've got that out, it's not that difficult from here on in. So we'll just move the helicopter to the one side. Uh, again, doing that on my PC bench, which uh, <laughs> should really be doing it on the workbench, but uh, there you go. Okay, so 
Um, basically we've got the block out. Now the block is a two piece block and it splits in half so what we do from here is manipulate that block out. Uh, again some can be very tight and some can be well almost drop into two parts. Um, the easiest way to do this is just to get it started and then from there just get a screwdriver um, and just gently prise it apart. Try and do it evenly because if you do it um, basically if you do it with uh, a big gap on one side and a small gap on the other it's going to be really tricky for you. Okay. Now also to watch at this point is your bearings. Uh, you've got two bearings on that gear there, the, the conical top gear and the flat gear that goes onto your main gear and as you prise these apart you will notice they will drop and also your centre bearing will probably drop as well, just like that. So, okay, centre bearing there, one of the bearings there, and obviously as I'm splitting it apart, and slowly, bit by bit, that is going to drop out, and that bearing is going to drop like that. Okay. Now, sometimes you can get away with just prising these open about that much, but to be honest, it's easier just to take them all the way apart, or at least three quarters of the way apart. And again, you'll find your own way of doing this. But uh, again, a tricky thing to do. But once you've done it a few times, you'll know what to expect and you'll know how much you can put pressure and force on it. So there we go, that's split. Okay. So what we've got now is two casings, two casings and some gears. Now you can have a look at the gears um, and you might need one of these, my own magnifying glass. Um, doesn't work very well on the camera obviously, but you can see which gears you've stripped. Uh, in this case there's one gone off the top main gear there and it's a conical gear on there. Usually you only strip one or two teeth and it's just, it's annoying. But I suppose something's got to give. Okay, so new gears. There we go. One of these, two of these. Now this one is relatively easy to get out. This is a case with two bearings encased inside, and all that basically happens is if you can see, you just work that plastic shroud out like that, and those two do come apart like that. The bearings usually stay inside, some of them are different, but mainly the bearing stays inside and that's what you get. So that gear goes in the bin and the new gear simply just pushes on like that. Okay. Make sure you can get it all the way in because that will make it easier when you assemble it all back together. Okay. So that there can sit in the casing. And that casing there. There we go. Fits in that one nicely. So. There's one of your gears done. The next one, put your two bearings on. Now you can oil these if you like or put a little bit of grease on them, but um, these are pretty much greased and oiled anyway. And they feel good. So as you've dropped it in there, try and just give it a little spin, just make sure everything feels free. Um, you've got a little bit of play. Okay, but everything seems to move freely and it's not binding. Okay, so old gear in the bin. And all you do then is basically offer your two sides of the casing back up, like that, and trying to push them together without dropping all your gears that you've just put in, your bearings out, gently push that together again. Okay. As I put that together, I think I'll pause because this is the boring bit. Okay, so push back together, everything's clipped in there, everything seems fairly tight. Just give it a little spin, make sure everything looks okay, and that part of it's done. Now, you've got two options here, you can put the boom back on, or you can just put this straight back in again. And my choice is to put it straight back in. Again, it's a little bit tight in there, especially these 450s with the servo on the back end there. Getting it in can be a little bit tricky, but you give it a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a shove, and try and line all the holes up as you're going in, and then it should, in theory, 
snap in like that and that's the locating pin snap back in so you can see why it's a bit difficult to get them out because they do snap in quite quite fiercely really okay just give it a little bit of shove around make sure all the holes are lined up okay you should be able to see your screw holes uh, you don't have to get them 100 percent but getting somewhere near just makes your life a little bit easier um, give that a little bit of a spin and just make sure that uh, everything seems okay which it does on this one okay it's good, yep, yeah, seems fine. You will get a little bit of binding because it's not screwed in yet, but uh, from that point, you can um, pretty much locate the screws back in. We're not going to put them in all the way, but I'll locate the screws in. So I'll do that now, and then we'll move to the next part. One thing I just want to mention, before we do move to the next part, is these screws. And what you need to do is put a little dab, and I mean the tiniest of dabs, okay? A little dab of uh, Loctite on there. What I tend to do is just get a piece of, um, I don't know, cardboard or paper or anything, put a, a dab of uh, the good stuff on it, the Loctite, and then just literally dab the end in. You only need the tiniest bit on there, so when you drive the screw in, you're actually driving it in and Loctiting it in as well. Because although the surround is plastic, the locating pegs are actually metal, so obviously metal to metal will vibrate loose, especially on a 450, so you want to Loctite those in. So we'll do that as well. Okay, so we've got the screws in. Now, what I tend to do, and it's personal choice again, is I tend to, on one side, which is the opposite side in this case, tighten the screws right up, but leave this side loose. Um, the reason being that block will not become tight until both sides are actually locked solid, which means all the screws still up all the way. So, at this point, we take the tail, and you'll notice in the tail, or most of them, have a slot just there. Now, it's obviously which way this goes round, because the, uh, the tail thing on the back. But that slot, you'll feel it as you're pushing it in that block there, and nipping it around a bit. I'll see, just get you some of that, get everything all lined up so you don't have those tucked underneath. As you're pushing it in, you will feel the locating peg. And again, sometimes it'll drop straight in there, and sometimes it just will not. Okay, and we need to give that a spin. There you go, so it's dropped in there. Okay, so there's a peg there and it drops in and it's pretty solid at that point. Okay, it's not going side to side anyway. You can't really twist it, so it's pretty solid. Okay. So what you need to do from there is now, as long as that's really tight in there and make sure it's nice and tight when you're doing this, whack these screws right up. Uh, again, don't put a huge amount of force on these. Anybody that's done any 10mm screws in the past or 8 mil rather, will know that uh, they easily shear and you don't want that. You don't need to do them rock solid because you've got the Loctite on there, but just to a point where you can feel them, they're sort of bitten, that's a want of a better word, and yeah, just give them a little bit of force just to make sure that sort of extra quarter of a turn's got in there. Okay, so that now is rock solid. So, all we need to do now is connect the stabiliser bars back up and the tail back up again, and uh, that's about it. So, as you can see, it's a fairly easy job, um, nothing to be really worried about, there's nothing really that can go that wrong, it's tricky, for want of a better word, but it probably takes you 15, 20 minutes max uh, to change these. Um, but hopefully that's been some use, and um, if you've got any questions, comments, feel free to comment and uh, ask, because uh, nobody's an expert in this game, but hopefully if we can help uh, a few people out, then uh, jobs are good. Anyway, hopefully we'll get some good flying days over the weekend, uh, but as it's going into September now, I've got a feeling the flying is going to get less and less. Um, but uh, I'll let you know how I get on with the G31. I say I had it for quite a while now. Um, didn't get on with the 3GX too well on this particular helicopter anyway, uh, for some strange reason, don't know why. Um, but the 3, uh, G31 seems to be okay at the moment. Um, so I'm going to test it, give it, uh, give it a go, see how I get on with it, and uh, hopefully do some more videos on it. Cheers, bye now.